Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good weekend and you are all well rested. My name is Duduzi Lekopega, teaching you life sciences grade 12. In the front there, you have my email address should you have any questions about life sciences. Ne? Hello, Bob. And then the topic for today is negative feedback in regulating water volume and salt concentration. You remember last week we had started off with the topic of homeostasis and we covered other forms of negative feedback. The one we are focusing on today is negative feedback in regulating water volume and salt concentration. And then I've also prepared some homework for you guys. I'm not sure how to give it to you, but it will be by tomorrow. I'll try and upload it in class here. Yeah? So that you guys can do it and we'll also mark it in class together. I think that's the best way now so that we can check our progress. Ne? So I'll say I'll give you the homework tomorrow, then we'll mark it the day after in class. So remember it started with the negative feedback last week. Today we are doing one focusing on water volume and salt concentration. You remember now which one, one which 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 organ is mainly involved here? It is the kidneys. One of the functions of the kidneys is excreting harmful soluble waste, for example, urea. The kidneys also maintain and control the water volume and salt concentration in the, in the body. So this type of negative feedback is regulated mainly in the kidneys because it is the kidneys function to what? To maintain the water volume and the salt concentration. And then you remember whilst we were doing the end of studying the endocrine system, we discussed the hormones. And then one of the hormones we discussed was the ADH, which is the antidiuretic hormone. It is made in the hypothalamus and stored and secreted from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Remember, just a quick recap, what is the, what, what's the other name for the pituitary gland? It is the master gland. So it's involved in many functions of all the other glands. That is why it's called the mustard gland or the primary gland. So ADH is made there in the hypothalamus, then secreted from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And then from there, it will be regulating functions in the kidneys. ADH is responsible for osmoregulation. Osmoregulation. What is osmoregulation? Well, remember from grade 11, we did this topic. So when water volume in the blood is too high, the blood is diluted and the salt concentration in the blood is low. Then ADH in that instance, is uh, ADH production is minimal. This causes the walls of the collecting tubules in the kidneys to become less permeable to water. Why is the, are the walls less permeable to water? Because water volume in the blood is too high. When the water volume in the blood is too high, it means that the blood is diluted and salt concentration is low. So it's like example, you're making juice, you pour too much water and too little juice. That's just the typical example there. When you have too much water and too little juice, it means ADH production will be minimal. This then causes the walls of the collecting tubules in the kidneys to become less permeable to water. As a result, less water will be reabsorbed from the kidney tubules back into the blood. The urine then becomes quite diluted and pale as excess water is expelled and the water volume in the body is reduced. So that's what happens. You'll see sometimes when your urine is too yellow and you drink enough water, then it would become diluted. So that's, that explains here the process. When you see that pale color of the urine, it, it explains exactly what has happened in your system when you have too much water in the blood. And then the tubules, the collecting tubules are, not, are less permeable to that water then the water is redirected whereby the, then the water will be reabsorbed from the kidneys back into the blood. That's when it happens like that. But then, remember in this process here, you need to also remember, I just need you to be able to remember, when water volume is high, then ADH production is low. So 
it's, it's, it's reverse effects on each other. Water volume is high, ADH production is low. That's the main important thing. When you're studying these, the negative feedbacks, you need to understand the effect or the hormone and then the factor there. So in this part of osmoregulation, we are dealing with water balance in the body. So and we are dealing with the water balance and salt concentration. So that is why it's important to understand the hormone that is responsible for that process. And then when the water, water volume in the blood is too low and the blood has a high concentration of salt, then more ADH is secreted from the pituitary gland. The increase in ADH makes the walls of the collecting tubules more permeable to water. A lot of water is then reabsorbed by osmosis from the tubules and re-enters the blood. As more water is reabsorbed, the urine released by the kidneys becomes concentrated and darker in color. The keep quick recap once again, the opposite effect now. When water volume in the blood is too low in this case, water volume is low, it means then what? The blood has a high concentration of salt. So when water volume is low, blood has high concentration of salt. It means now you have poured too much juice and little water. Ne? Then more ADH is concentrated. More ADH is what is, is secreted here. So the ADH, which is the hormone, will always be directly proportional to the concentration of salt and inversely proportional to the concentration of water. So just think of it that way. More ADH is secreted from the pituitary gland. Again, we see the master gland coming into play. The increase in ADH, what does the ADH do here? It will make the walls of the collecting tubules more permeable to water. Do you remember how the process of osmosis works, right? It will, if it will, because of the high salt concentration, then more water would be allowed in so that it could balance out that concentration. The reason when the water volume was high, the reason the collecting tubules were not permeable to water was because of this process of osmosis. It couldn't allow more water inside because there was already too high concentration of water. So it needs to balance things out. That's what osmosis does, right? Then a lot of water is then reabsorbed by osmosis from the tubules and re-enters the blood. As more water is reabsorbed, the urine released by the kidneys becomes concentrated and darker in color. Therefore, too much water in the blood results in less ADH being secreted, which causes water to be lost from the body, thus bringing the water volume back to an acceptable level. Too little water in the blood results in more ADH being released, which causes more water to be reabsorbed back into the blood. So you, these are, you just need to understand these and the opposing effects it has on each other. This is the diagram which will show you the negative feedback mechanism in osmoregulation. Remember I explained to you that you'll have at the center there, you'll have your normal concentrations of whatever, factor you are dealing with. Right now, the factor here is water. You have in osmoregulation, the factor is water. There. So normal concentration of water in the blood. And then when you arrow up there is when there's an increase of water in this blood, it means less ADH is released by the pituitary gland. When less ADH is released, it means then the water is not reabsorbed by the the tubules, the collecting tubules, that would then cause a decrease in water in the blood because it's not reabsorbed and it's just excreted, right? Then you'll have a decrease of water in the blood. Then, then it's back to normal concentration of water in the blood. Then in cases whereby you have a decrease of water in the blood, then more ADH will be released by the pituitary gland 
that would allow then the what's this the the collecting tubules as i said here they are more permeable to water now then the lot of water will be reabsorbed by osmosis from the tubules and re-enters the blood that is when when more water enters re-enters the blood and it is reabsorbed the urine released by the kidneys becomes concentrated and darker in color so this the all that process occurs here then because more adh is released the more water is being reabsorbed in the blood that's why now there will be an increase of water in the blood i think by now you've seen that all these diagrams are the same like i've mentioned to you what you just need to know and understand is the process, the mechanism occurring. If it's osmoregulation, you need to know the factors involved in osmoregulation, the hormones involved in the osmoregulation, the control center, you understand that? Then you can be able to just substitute that in. When we're dealing with a uh, negative feedback mechanism in carbon dioxide and oxygen concentrations, again, you need to know the factor there whatever hormone is involved or the control center that is involved so that you are able to fit it in. But the, the general structure of these diagrams is just like this. It's normal, then there'd be an increase in the factor, then there'll be an action taken to counter that increase and it will decrease going back to normal. But if there's a decrease, then there'll be an action or reaction rather that occurs to counter this decrease, which will then result in an increase of water in the blood. You remember when we discussed the, what are the, the diseases, the disorders of the endocrine system, which will also apply here, was that the reason that there would end up being a disorder is because there's, the, the, there's usually the negative feedback mechanism is affected somehow. It's probably because whatever is supposed, the effect of the, maybe the fact that it's doing like this, there's an increase of blood, but then ADH is not released. Then if ADH is not released, it means there's no, there's nothing that is there to counter to the change. So then they can't bring back the balance. So that's what would usually happen when there's a disorder. One of the functions here are altered. Maybe it's the ADH that has a problem, or maybe it's something in the pituitary gland that has a problem. Or maybe the ADH does, is released and by the pituitary gland, but whatever factors that it has to attach to, remember when we did that of glucose, we explained that the, what are these, the, the, the example of the lock and key model, there are those factors that need to attach to these glucose molecules and allow them to pass through, through the membrane where we're not attaching correctly. So that is why there would be a problem. So a problem is always around here to study your negative feedback mechanism and then you'll understand exactly where the problem might be. Then the salt content of the body is regulated by a hormone called aldosterone, which is secreted by the cortex of the adrenal gland. So in the previous one, in osmoregulation, the main glands involved were the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. But now, when we deal with mainly the salt content of the body, that one is regulated by the hormone called the aldosterone, which is secreted by the cortex of the adrenal glands. You remember that adrenal glands are found right at the top of the kidneys, right? So you'll have the left adrenal gland and the right adrenal glands. Then your adrenal glands are the structure where you have the cortal, cortex and the medulla. So the cortex is the outer part of the adrenal gland and the medulla is in the, is the inner part of the adrenal gland. So the aldosterone is found on the cortex. That is then the one that is responsible for the salt content. The effect of aldosterone is to retain sodium ions, which in turn, re re which in turn increases the water retention and raises the blood pressure by increasing the blood volume in the body. So that is the effect there. The effect of aldosterone is to retain sodium ions. Sodium ions which in turn would increase water retention and raise the blood pressure by increasing the blood volume in the body. 
Low levels of sodium as well as low blood pressure will cause the release of aldosterone. Yes, Bob, we, do, we covered this. We covered this under um, endocrine system. Now we are covering it under homeostasis. But yeah, for, for you guys who did it with me in May, this is like revision to you guys. It's May or June somehow, but it's like revision for that part. Ne? But now it's under the topic of homeostasis. So in homeostasis, you will get topics where they ask you to, to write about different uh, negative feedback mechanisms. So like I said, I kept on emphasizing that for those of you who are studying with me, the endocrine system, it will be like revision for you guys. And I'm so glad you remember it went up well. Thank you. So low levels of sodium as well as low blood pressure will cause the release of aldosterone. So when you do your negative feedback mechanism and you have a decrease of sodium, you know then that it will mean more aldosterone will be secreted by the adrenal glands, right? And then if there's a high concentrations of sodium ions in the blood, then aldosterone will not be secreted to allow it to go back to normal. Yeah, guys. The increase in aldosterone stimulates the kidneys to increase the reabsorption of sodium back into the blood. Water follows the sodium that is being reabsorbed. This increase in water retention leads to an increase in blood volume resulting in higher blood pressure. If the blood pressure becomes too high, aldosterone production decreases. Then less sodium is retained and less water follows the sodium. Blood volume decreases and this lowers the blood pressure. So you're, all this here, literally right now in grade 12, you are incorporating everything you've ever learned. You're incorporating osmos osmosis here where you see that this water is following the sodium. So it's explaining the process of osmosis, osmosis, hence the word osmoregulation. Remember that? And then you're understanding how it happens that someone would, would have low blood pressure or high blood pressure. So when your high blood pressure or low blood is almost chronic now, it means there's a problem with your some processes there with the negative feedback mechanisms because as we can see we see how how the body reacts and brings the body back to balance or the blood volume back to balance if the sodium concentration was too high or if the sodium concentration was too low but now when you hear someone saying hey i've got high blood pressure then you get to understand that okay something in the body or in the negative feedback mechanism must have gone wrong okay? because then when when there's a when there's an increase in the in the sodium concentration the water needs to 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 follow that sodium right it needs to follow that sodium but when there's a decrease again then it has effects so when now when this increase in water retention leads to an increase in the blood volume here yeah, it means you'll have high blood pressure so how do you counter that? How do you bring it back to normal pressure? It means you need to decrease the sodium content again. But it means if you, I have a chronic high blood pressure condition, then it means there's a problem somewhere there with the processes or even with the hormone that needs to, to regulate that. So when you have high blood pressure as a chronic, chances are aldosterone production, is, when it's supposed to stop, to make sure that it brings down this blood pressure. Because as you can see, if blood pressure becomes too high, aldosterone production decreases. But then, if you have constant high blood pressure, it means there's, a, there's something wrong again with aldosterone production. It might be one of the reasons. There might be something wrong with aldosterone production there because you will need the aldosterone production to decrease. So chances are the aldosterone production will not decrease. It will just continue being secreted, secreted, which will contribute to you having high blood pressure when it's actually supposed to now decrease to allow the body now to, to allow the blood volume or the blood pressure to go down. 
So look at that. When doctors and scientists diagnose these things, they study the body. So if you have a, you want to dream of a future in medicine, then pay attention to life sciences. You really learn the most here about that. Then this is, did I not show you exactly? I showed you the ADH, right? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, hey, I showed you the ADH. But again, I actually, I meant to show you the, the one for osmo, for, for salt concentration, but we can just do it together right now. The salt concentration, we have normal concentration of salt in the blood. Then you have high concentration of salt. Oh, yeah, normal concentration of salt here or sodium. Salt is sodium is salt, right? I hope we all clear on that. There's an when there's a, then here yeah, there's an increase of salt in the blood. So I'm just substituting the word salt for water for salt because the factor has changed now. This is the negative feedback mechanism in salt water concentration or in blood pressure or in salt concentration salt water concentration i hope you are following salt water concentration you know the symbol right this symbol is the symbol for concentration then there'll be what when you have an increase of salt in the blood, what happens when there's an increase of salt in the blood? Less aldosterone is secreted. Let me find. You have an increase of salt in the blood, less aldosterone. So the hormone changes. The hormone that regulates salt is aldosterone. The hormone that regulates water is ADH. Aldosterone, which is found in the adrenal glands, which are found on the kidneys. You'll remember all of those? We even labeled our endocrine glands. Okay less aldosterone is released by the aldosterone is released by the adrenal glands yes the pituitary gland is involved but the main one here we are dealing with that releases aldosterone is the adrenal gland adrenal gland then there'll be what there'll be a decrease of salt in the Blood. By now you've understood which one is the factor. Salt. Ne? Then it will bring the, the normal concentration of salt back in the water. Because it's decreasing it now, it will bring it back to normal concentrations. There. Then when there is a decrease of salt in this blood, salt, the salt we are dealing with here is sodium. Remember, right? Salt. Sodium is represented by this, so you can write it in full, or you can show us the symbol of sodium ion there. Then there'll be what? More aldosterone will be released. More aldosterone is released from the body. Aldosterone. is released by the adrenal gland. So here I need you to understand that we said the pituitary gland is the mustard gland, right? So it was involved in the in sending out the message that the aldosterone needs to be released. But the only gland that can actually release the aldosterone is what is the adrenal gland. So the message may have come from the pituitary gland but the gland that will actually release it is the adrenal gland by the kidneys there. And it makes sense why salt and water concentrations are regulated by the kidneys because the kidneys are the ones that are regulating that and they're involved in the process of uh, the secreting urine. Remember that? 
It's also a recap from your grade 11 work, ne, guys? So you understand that you clearly need to understand and master your work in grade 11. Yes, Bob, that's correct. The pituitary gland will stimulate the adrenal gland, which will then secrete the aldosterone. Remember that? And then tell me now that you, now I'm asking you a question. What is the other hormone that is secreted by the adrenal gland? That other one here that we haven't discussed here. That's not involved in this one. Yes, Bob, wow, you guys listen, yes? I like how you pay attention. Yep, that is it. It's increase in the salt, in salt concentration. So this is what I meant. Thank you, Bob, you're correct. It's adrenaline, but that one is involved in fight and or flight responses, which we'll deal with at a later stage. And we've also discussed anyway. But do you see here now? That's exactly what I meant when I said, understand the, the negative feedback mechanism you're dealing with. Right now we're dealing with the one of salt water concentration. Then what is involved here? What is the factor? It is salt. And then you need to also realize which hormones and the control center you are dealing with, the gland rather. So here we just changed. Really the structure remained the same. The structure of this negative feedback mechanism is not changing. The only thing that changes the factor the hormones and the glands. Right now, we see normal concentration of salt in the blood. It then, if it increases, then less aldosterone will be released by the adrenal gland. Then it will bring back the salt concentration down. It will decrease it until it's back to normal concentrations. But when there's a decrease of salt in the blood, more aldosterone will be released by the adrenal gland and then there'll be an increase of salt in the blood. So you understand this? This is clear, ne? I really, really want you guys to get um, full marks here. I really, really need that. I need you to get really, really full marks in this sections here. Life sciences, you can get 100% or even a distinction. Let me not take it that far. Okay, how does the pituitary gland stimulate the adrenal gland. Okay, so what happens, remember where the pituitary gland is situated in the brain, right? So when the, these changes are occurring, the brain is the, mo the central part of the brain, of the body. So all communication starts there. If the body, if there's any change, that message is sent to the brain. When there's any change that needs to happen, that message will be sent to the brain. It will be detected because of all these nerves and other things that are other communication centers rather that are or messengers that are sent around the body to collect all that information. So as soon as there's a change in this concentration in the body, that message is sent to the brain. And then the pituitary gland will then be the one that will send the messages to what? To the adrenal gland. Yes, those messages, yes. Yes, exactly that. So the messages are sent there by the, from the pituitary gland to the adrenal gland. So there's a whole lot of communication that happens in our body. When we explain processes like this, what we are really doing is just simplifying it. But there's actually more going behind the scenes than we can even imagine. Because that's a very good question, actually. How, how does it stimulate it? How do you even know? Like, you know, like we said, we are just explaining it in the most simplest terms when there is more complex processes happening there. But because it's in the brain, it will then gather all those messages, and then it will stimulate it and send that message whereby it will then have the effect to now release the correct hormone. So that's amazing. That's how amazing our bodies are, how they function. Can you imagine that? It's like you just get a message and you know exactly which hormone to release when to release it and to what levels you need to bring those factors back to. It's, it's amazing. You will like, I always emphasize this, the more I study life sciences, the more I realize how wonderfully and fearfully we were designed. So when you do, do this and you study this even more, really recognize how amazing you are as a human being because all of these occur in your body. All of these occur in our bodies. So you must be so, so special for your body to be so intelligent in all its functions. Ne? 
that's it yeah from this topic from me today uh, are you okay bob we can't play kahoots when it's just us ne? I'll, I'll wait for the the attendants to pick up and then we can start doing kahoots and have fun with each other but for now i guess yeah are you okay bob tell me any questions All right, if there are no questions, remember my email address is available for you to ask and I will respond to you at all times. That's it from me today. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.